Hello and welcome to this James Bike Guy where today we're getting a chance to take a look at a mid-level Trek aluminum hardtail mountain bike. Now this mountain bike is a cross-country style bike and it's been in their lineup for quite a while and we're going to get a chance to check out what this 2023 Trek Excalibur is all about. So in this video we're going to go into features and designs as well as we'll eventually find out exactly what it weighs. So if this kind of thing is interesting to you I suggest you stick around and let's check out the bike together. All right getting into the Trek Excalibur series. Now I said in the intro this is a 2023 and I'm sure many of you will take a look at this and say well that looks like the 2022 model. And that's true because this is a carryover from 2022 with a modest price increase for 2023, making it the 2023 model. Now this serial number is a 23. They're carrying the same beautiful black color into 2023 and the part spec stays mostly unchanged. The Trek Excalibur is in the the Trek mountain bike lineup, and it's focused a little more around XC riding than anything else. This bike is gonna feature things like 100 millimeters of front suspension travel, and then wheel size of 29 inch on sizes medium and larger, and 27 and a half on sizes extra small and small. But then the frame geometry is certainly gonna be more in the XC field of things, and this comes in as the upgrade from their most entry-level mountain bike hardtail, the Marlin. So in Trek's lineup, they go Marlin, then they go Excalibur like this, and then they go to Pro Caliber. And in that graduation between bikes, effectively what they're doing is they're allowing the bike to get a little more performancey, lose a bit of weight, and then also become a bit more capable for the rider looking to push their limits. Now, this Excalibur series is a pretty awesome spot for somebody who's looking for a good quality hardtail mountain bike for light trails, XC riding, or getting into youth racing like Nika races. And I think that's where this comes in in Trek's lineup. Because alternatively, at about the same price point, Trek also has their Roscoe series. And so you would choose this over the other one based on the type of riding you're doing. If you're more of a mountain biker that's looking to be able to do drops or jumps and also take on some really rough terrain, well then the Roscoe is probably the right choice. But if you're looking for a bike that's going to be a little bit lighter, a little more accurate, and potentially even faster, that's where this Excalibur comes in. Now speaking of this particular one, you'll see this is the Excalibur 8. And the 8 essentially means the part spec that comes on this. The Excal 9 is sort of the top end variant of this bike. And the 8 is going to come with a very good mixture of parts. Generally in Trek's lineup, the 8 level generally means that it's going to be sort of the greatest hits of parts. Where you're getting good quality componentry, good quality fork, but not quite busting the budget. The other neat thing about this bike is this is going to use their Alpha Gold Aluminum. So you'll see this is shaped and manipulated tubing, aluminum frame. It's got internal cable routing, a inch and an eighth to inch and a half tapered head tube, which is always nice to see. Of course, then you have the threaded bottom bracket, good for durability and serviceability, a integrated headset in that front end, 31.6 millimeter seat post diameter. It is internally routed if you wanted to use a dropper post. And then out back, one of the more controversial things about this bike is this is rocking what's called Boost 141. So Boost 141 is the quick release variant of Boost. So you'll notice in the back, there is no through axle. So because this is QR, this is 141 millimeters over lock nut width. And that dimension is the same as a Boost 148, except for a 148 runs a through axle. So the over lock nut width is slightly different. Now, the only downside to that is it does make finding a replacement wheel slightly more challenging or that you also don't get the benefits of a stiffer through axle, but it's a place where they can save a little bit of cost, make it a little more simple to manufacture and get out a fairly neat bike. Now, up front, we have 100 millimeters of front suspension travel coming from a RockShox Judy SL. So the RockShox Judy SL is a 32 millimeter stanchioned 100 millimeter fork on this bike. It's going to be an XC style 
using a solo air spring, which allows you to adjust the air pressure to both your weight and your riding style. So you can increase and decrease the spring rate of the bike. And then it's gonna have a turnkey damper, which will allow you to go from all the way open to different gradations of firmness in the damper unit all the way down to locked out. So that means on an extended climb, you can turn that down, lock it out, and it's not gonna bounce around on you, flip it up, it opens up and becomes a lot more supple. So the last thing to talk about this bike before we get into the features is gonna be geometry. And because the geometry of this bike is oriented around XC, it's certainly gonna have steeper angles than what you'd see on some of the more Enduro bikes or even that Roscoe we were talking about before. So the first thing on the front end, this is gonna have a 69 and a half degree head tube angle the seat tube angle will be effective at 73 degrees. And then out back, your chainstay length is going to be 438 millimeters. That 438 millimeters is not short, but it's also not too long. And that's going to combine together with that seat tube and head tube angle to make the bike very stable for faster rides. And then that head tube being steep at 69 degrees is certainly going to help allow the steering precision to be a bit more sharp than some of the slacker head tube angles while giving up just a little bit of downhill prowess. So now let's jump into the part spec of this bike and we'll start with the cockpit here with an all aluminum Bontrager setup. So this is an aluminum 31.8 millimeter Bontrager handlebar. It's mounted up with this blender stem. The blender stem is an alloy stem. It's got mounts to be able to add a spot for a light or GPS or your cell phone on the handlebar and as we go to the end of the handlebars You'll see it comes with some fairly nice Bontrager grips with a neat feature that I love to see It's got a bolt there. So this is a bolt-on grip Which means that tightens down keeps the grip from moving around which is very nice out back is going to be a Bontrager Arvada saddle not my favorite, but a totally functional saddle mounted up on a two bolt aluminum seat post. Now this seat post could be swapped out in the future for a dropper post if you wanted to, and it is quick release so you're able to raise and lower fairly easy. When we move into the drivetrain, this is where things definitely get pretty nice. And this is gonna be a Shimano 1x12 drivetrain. So out back is the Shimano XT 12 speed rear derailleur. This XT 12 speed rear derailleur then operates through a 10 to 51 tooth 12 speed Dior cassette going forward to a Shimano Dior crank set. This crank set is the MT 511, which is the non-branded sort of Dior level of crank set. Goes through that threaded bottom bracket and this matches together to have a really nice one by 12 system. Going into the wheels and tires, it's specced really nicely with these Ardent race tires. These come in a 29 by 2.35, of course. That's gonna be only on the bikes that are mediums and larger. Smaller bikes are gonna have the 27 and a half. And then they're mounted up on some Kovi TLR wheels. This is a tubeless ready wheel and tire setup. It comes out of the factory and out of the shop, tubeless setup, and they're laced up with some sealed bearing boost hubs. Well, now that we've gotten a chance to take a look at the specs and features of this bike, it's time we find out exactly what it weighs. The actual weight of the Trek Excalibur 8 is gonna come in and weigh 31.02 pounds. Thanks for joining me to check out this 2023 Trek Excalibur 8. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts on this bike down in the comment section below. While you're at it, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and hit subscribe so you can see more videos like this to check out in the future.